Hey guys, it's May May, and today I have slowed down, I should say Tamitha, has slowed down my card video that I did recently showing you how to use the Glistening Once Again stamp set. Um, Tamitha said she had gotten some requests for me to slow it down and kind of point out some of the things I did in it. I think it was the ribbon trick, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So here's what I want to show you. So this is a piece of Mente paper, the one with the poinsettias on it, and I want to mimic that poinsettia with our stamp set. So I'm literally going to use it as inspiration for when I'm coloring. And I also took another piece of a vintage, just blue and white kind of paper to add some color and just cut that little strip that's going to go on the side of the card in a few minutes. Now, one thing I want to point out here is I am stamping this with a green pigment ink. And the reason I did that is because the majority of the stamp, the part that doesn't get colored, is actually green. Like the little pine pieces that are sticking out are pretty much green. So I find that when I'm not going to be coloring something, like on this one, like those, those pine pieces, it's best to go ahead and stamp in the color you want them to be. So it's just a trick. If you're ever doing something that maybe you're doing with branches and flowers and you want the branches to be brown and then you're going to color in and around them, this is a good way to do it. Go ahead and stamp it in the brown and then add your color with your color pencils or your markers. So I'm using color pencils because I use some pigment ink. And the first thing I'm doing here is just laying down a base color. So just a light um, light hand base color. And notice how I'm not being very picky about it because in the image that I'm trying to mimic, it's kind of distressed and worn, and I think this will be kind of cool to do this this way. So I'm just doing this light hand put in of color, and then I'm going to go back and add my detail. So the thing I want to point out here is because I'm doing this light layer of color, I'm going to be able to shade without changing my color pencil. Notice how here I'm using the same color, but I'm laying down a heavier hand of wax or whatever your color pencil is made of. So only in the areas I want to give some dimension to the um, petal. Now you can't see it, but off screen is my little poinsettia paper that I'm going to be using. And that's 100% when I'm mimicking. I am literally laying down this color exactly like the picture. And that is a great tip for you guys. I want to tell you, if you're not sure about coloring things, if you're not sure where to put light and shadow, you can go online and look at pictures or photographs of other images and just kind of copy where the light and the shadow is laying, which is literally what I'm doing here. I'm just looking at my poinsettia and laying in that red color just by using a heavier hand. It's kind of fun. If you're not comfortable with alcohol markers, if you're just if they just kind of still uh, mess with you, I've actually talked to so many people the past week to two weeks that have told me they're not ready for alcohol markers because sometimes they're just intimidating. Color pencils can give you the same beautiful effect just by changing your pressure, the amount you lay down, and you can actually even use less. You don't have to have this huge um, amount of colors. Just, you know, this one color is giving me two different shades. So that's what I'm doing on the red, and we'll come back and look at the green. Now here you're seeing I'm doing the green exactly the same light color, and then I'm going to go back and add the depth by just going heavier handed on my color pencil. I may have changed the color on this one. I don't remember exactly. It's been a while since I filmed this, so I'm going to watch for a second. But I'm pretty sure I did it the same way, just adding a heavier hand where I wanted that color and referencing that sheet and looking at that one again. Yeah, I did change the color on this one. You can see that's a different color. So you can do that either way. It works whatever works best for you. I love how this is turning out. I'm not a good colorist, but I play around. And the biggest thing is, you may be like me where you can look at something and create it or look at something and copy it. That's why you want that inspiration photo of some point that you can look at and kind of get inspiration from. So that's what I did here. And now I decide to fussy cut this out. Now I could have used an SVG file. And for those of you who don't know, we have free SVG files for all of our stamps. But I decide to hand fussy cut this one out because I like to fussy cut. I know a lot of people don't believe that, but I do. So I want you to notice, see how those pine pieces have stayed that dark green? That's why I wanted to stamp it in green instead of black. So now it looks like I have three or four colors, but really I only used, only did the poinsettia and the leaves and then the berries, of course. All right, I'm adding ink. Now see this? I wanted the whole thing to get a little bit dirty looking, a little bit old. So I took my ink blending tool and went all over it to kind of dirty it up or kind of grunge it up. Then I took my white pen because, you know, I'm not going to do anything without my white pen. And I just put some highlights here and there. Now, this is kind of a fun thing. Instead of creating a sentiment strip and adding it on top again for another layer, 
I decide to stamp directly on my pattern paper, which is going to be the background for my poinsettia. And what I want to tell you is, although you only see me stamp one time here, I actually stamp that like three times to get it nice and bold on that paper. And I think it looks really good. Now, this is the part I think people were questioning. What did I do with that ribbon? I took that ribbon and my ink blending tool and I didn't want it to be stark white and I didn't have something the perfect cream color. So I just ran my blending tool down it to kind of make it not be so white and kind of blend in. Now I'm going to wrap that um, ribbon around that little polka dotted strip that I made so you can just kind of see it behind where the flowers are going to live. And it's really cute. You'd be surprised. You would think that the um, ribbon wouldn't look good with the ink on it, but it just kind of knocks that white back just enough so that it matches uh, the card and, the, and what we're doing so much better. So I add some foam to this guy, um, just several little pieces here and there because I want it to pop up. And I put it to the left-hand side of my card so that it would give a little interest and not just be the poinsettias on the front and kind of break up the... I guess how much everything looked alike. And so that one just lives on the left-hand side. And then I'm going to take my poinsettia bundle that we colored, and I'm going to pop it up on some foam as well and put it on top where those meet, like right over the line, kind of playing to the one-third side of the card. I just think this turns out really cute, and I love how vintage it is. I think you guys might like that too. Next, I add a little bit of gold bling to the middle of that poinsettia because I love poinsettias with just a little bit of kind of gold um, gold touches in the middle. Maybe even you could use like your jewel drops if you don't have these little sticky blings or whatever. But I just think it really pops. Now I'm taking my glitter. This one, I forget what this one's called. I'll put it in the description below, but it's a glitter brush. And I'm glittering that thing up. And I mean, I really glittered it up. I want to tell you that because I think it looks so pretty with all the glitter showing. This is some glossy accents and where the little um, berries were, I wanted to make them shine. So I added a little glossy accents to every one of the berries. And I just think it turned out cool. It's very not my style card, very not. It's me stepping outside of the box and doing something extremely vintage and extremely different from me. Now on the inside, I went to the same stamp set. I love this stamp set. And I took this big old sentiment and put it right on the inside of the card. Now you could totally stamp inside of here and use the color pencils again and kind of mimic the front. That would be gorgeous. But I thought this was enough for this one. So I'm gluing the panel we made directly down to the front of the card because I already have dimension on the panel and I don't like to double up dimension too much. And I feel like I already did that a little bit. So I'm going to glue this down and that card is done. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this answered the questions you had when you saw this one done in the Dash into the Stamps videos. And if you make one of these, I want to see it. Put it on our customer gallery at mamiemadeit.com. And until next time, bye now.